right, so we're here at Truman Lake and it's August, you know, uh, we're towards the first part of August, I think it's August 7th or 8th, and uh, you know, we, we're targeting those summertime bass. Um, in the last week and a half, we've kind of had a little cold snap, and whenever I say cold, you know, that's tongue in cheek, but uh, the highs were only getting to the low 80s, and typically this time of year around Truman Lake and Warsaw Clinton area, I mean, it can be 110 in the shade. So we have some cooler water temperatures and we also got a lot of rain. Um, so the water temperatures are probably cooler than what you would see normally for this time of year. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out, we're on the lower end of the lake, we're gonna try to do some structure fishing, we're gonna do some some things, uh, you know, some techniques that that you guys would would like to like to see firsthand, you know, because these are some of the things that work at Truman Lake in August. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the baits and some of the rods, some of the setups that I throw, you know, and catch these summertime bass. First of all, you're going to see I probably carry way too many rods and reels, <laughs> but uh, I like to have uh, I like to have options. I, I don't like to have something and have it back at the boat storage, not have it in the boat, and then go looking for it and go, ugh, I need that rod or I need that bait. So I carry a lot of stuff with me, you know, just to, on these days that we're experimenting. So the first thing I'm gonna pull out is a deep crankbait. And I always put rod socks on all my rods whenever I, whenever I put them in my rod locker. Uh, whenever I get my bows from Pro's Choice Marine, uh, my Nitro Z21s come with a great rod organizer that's already in the boat but it doesn't hold as many rods as I need so I always take that out so that's that's what you'll see you know I've got a lot of rods in there with rod socks on them but to get back to the setup I've got a lose five to one super duty reel I have a lose LM CBR2 which is a seven foot six uh, medium heavy action and this is a Profound Outdoors Z-Boss 20 in citrus color. And you can tell that guy's been cranked a few miles. You know, his bill's all chewed up. I've got the, got the belly hook uh, has worn on the bait. And I like to throw this on fluorocarbon. And anything between 10 and 12 is typically what I'll go with. And so... That bait and that setup is really, really good. And the reason why I choose the five to one, lots of guys have lots of different, lots of different theories, but the five to one doesn't wear you out so much. It allows you to make long casts, you get the bait down, and then once you get it down in that target area, you can really work that bait the way that you need to, um, you know, and and be able to manipulate it. You know, I can speed it up by by reeling the bait faster, or I can just Go ahead and slow roll it, so to speak, whenever it gets down there and it's digging, digging, and I can wind it a couple of times, dig, 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 and, and lots of times those erratic movements, that's what triggers those bass to bite this. So, you know, that's that's a super cool setup. I like that seven foot six rod because it gives me a little bit more length and I can really fire it out there a long ways. My next deep crankbait for Truman Lake is a Norman DD-22 that I've custom painted. Um, but this setup is also a five to one uh, lose BB-1 with a LCBR-1, which is a seven foot two. It's a little shorter rod. And the reason why is that lots of times I'll be throwing this DD-22 uh, around timber. And you can really be a little bit more accurate. You don't have to have as long a cast, you know, whenever you're fishing that timber with that DD-22. And you can really get it out there. Once again, the five to one gear ratio reel, I just like that because I've caught so many fish over the years on a deep crankbait or any, for, for me, myself, anytime I throw a crankbait that has a bill on it, whether it's a wiggle wart, whether it's a deep little in, whether it's a DD-22, whether it's a Z Boss 20, whether it's a, a 6XD, a 10XD. Anytime I throw a, a, a bait with a diving bill, I like to throw a five to one gear ratio reel. You know, once again, uh, since I'm throwing this in timber, I'm gonna go up in line size, anywhere from 12 to 15 on my DD22. Um, that way, 
you know, there's old road beds here at Truman Lake and, and those trees would line those road beds, you know, on the ditches and things like that. So lots of times, you know, you're, you're targeting either they're going to be on the road, they'll be in the ditch or they'll be in the tree. So this allows you to be able to put that bait in those places and still have strong enough line to be able to have that abrasion resistance that you need. Okay, our next victim will be a personal favorite of mine. And I know this is this is gonna sound cliche, but I own Dave's custom baits. I hand carve balsa wood crank baits. I custom airbrush. I've done this since 2004. My black market balsa, size large, and this is bone glitter. This is something that is a super super good bass catcher. And this is a bait that I throw on 20 pound mono. The reason I use mono is that over fluorocarbon is that it doesn't have the sink ratio. So if I make a long cast and I'm winding this, and this, this is a shallow cover bait, you know, obviously you can tell by the square bill. So it's three to five max is what it's gonna dive and it probably won't get to five. You know, you're talking three, three and a half, four foot at the very most. But uh, you know, you're, you're targeting lay downs, you're targeting stumps, you're targeting rocks, you're targeting anything that's a shallow cover uh, or a shallow piece of cover that a bass could relate to. So that in itself and plus that also is a great representation. That's a great size. I myself like to throw a large bait. You know, other guys like to throw a B2 or a medium size or a B1, a small size that I make. Um, and all those are great baits. But for me, I'm a big, big bait, big fish guy. I've always, I, I learned, I learned the bass fish that way. And that's how I approach things. And so uh, tournament fishing, you know, you want to bring your five largest bass to the scales that you can. So I, I really don't have any, any desire to weed through a whole bunch of two pounders. I'd rather just go and if I'm only going to get five to seven bites a day, but they're all bigs, I'm throwing this to catch all bigs.